Now, for foreign chambers, the elections could mean a new perspective on how to further expand the Philippine economy. But the British Chamber of Commerce Philippines would like to see an acceleration of government's infrastructure push. BCCP Chairman Chris Nelson now joins us via Skype from BGC in Taguig to share more thoughts on the midterm polls. Hi, Chris. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. What are your thoughts on um, the election so far? I'm sure you've been watching the news and monitoring the news closely all morning. Well, first of all, obviously, as a foreign chamber, we wish everybody the best of luck, and we obviously wish it very successful elections. Uh, as you rightly said, what we're looking for, of course, is post-elections, is a further push and emphasis on the uh, Build the Bill Build program, uh, which was actually part of an economic forum in the UK in September last year, and obviously has created a great deal of interest in the UK and interest in the Philippines in total from British companies is increasing. And what what exactly would make the interest or would further the interest of, um, of the British in um, the Philippines as an investment company? Or as an uh, investment look, country? Think, right, I think there's a few areas. The first is uh, we obviously look for further liberalization of the economy. Uh, there have been some steps, but we would obviously warmly welcome that being accelerated and opening up. In that respect, we make mention of the Retail Liberalization Act, which was actually proposed in the, this current Congress and is expected to be refiled if not passed this time. That would, I think, give a great boost. Uh, we also think that uh, on the ease of doing business, the law that we strongly supported, along with many others, which was passed last year, is still waiting for the head of the agency and a separate budget to really show the implementation of that. And then uh, on train two, uh, which obviously would be expected to be discussed in the next Congress, uh, along with many other chambers, we have raised points regarding the fiscal incentives. And what we'd look for is obviously the hope there will be some taking of those inputs so that we can all move forward because we really see PESA as being a very important investment area, as I'm sure the government does, and it's obviously provided a lot of growth. All right. I'm curious to find out um, how you can compare elections uh, in the Philippines to the elections um, in the UK. Well, first of all, I'd say you have a very high turnout. Uh, Secondly, you actually get a holiday for your elections. In the UK, it's the public that people have to vote uh, when they can. Uh, and obviously, you're holding it in the summer when it's a very hot time. Uh, but of course, the UK elections or period, we've been obviously, as I'm sure you appreciate, dominated by the Brexit, which was a referendum. Uh, but I'd say, in general, the Philippine elections is a very high turnout. Uh, and of course, as I said, you give a public holiday, which is not the case in the UK. Mm -hmm. Do you experience the same problems that we have here um, in terms of um, just vote buying even an issue uh, over there? Um, is um, uh, are, are faulty or defective machines even an issue there? No, first of all, we are more simplified because if I understand, obviously I'm not a voter, but if I understand correctly, you'll have many, many candidates uh, on the ballot sheet, right, from the Senate, Congress, local elections. In the UK, it's a much more simplified and therefore quicker process. Uh, you basically vote for a member of parliament, there'll be three names, and it's one vote, that's it, there's no other candidates. Uh -huh. uh, our local elections are separate. So, uh, based on the last time I voted, which is many years ago in the UK, uh, there is no machines because it's done all very quickly and some of the first results are out. Uh, but as I'm making that comparison, we only have one candidate per district as opposed to here, as I understand, you'll be facing multiple choices. And of course, no, we don't have vote buying. All right. 
Hi, Chris. Uh, this is Ron. Uh, I, I just have one question for you, and uh, I do understand that businessmen and also uh, the, the members of your chamber are looking for uh, an acceleration in infrastructure push, but are you expecting that uh, immediately after the elections, regardless of the composition of uh, the possible composition of the Senate after the elections, uh, when the results are out, are you expecting that uh, this acceleration will come after uh, the polls are done? Yeah, I think part of it's been driven, as you've rightly referred to in your newscast, obviously, in terms of the budget. Uh, but yes, we're looking for an accelerated process, and I think that's very important, because I think that gives, obviously, an additional stimulus to the economy. And I believe also your build bill infrastructure very well presented in the UK last year, and I'd like to see that interest... Chris? Yeah, I was getting some of the voice, but yeah, I'm basically saying, look, yes, very much so. And I think also, regardless of the composition, uh, we're anticipating an increase in infrastructure spending, which will well. All right, thank you very much, Chris Nelson there.